Hi, I'm Ryan with Learberg, and last week we introduced you to our new foster dog, Whiskey. And in our first session, we introduced him to leash pressure. This week, we're going to show you how we introduced him to the treadmill. First, we're going to show you that we took a weight on Whiskey, and he's about at 94 pounds. He's a little over 94 pounds. And his ideal weight is probably closer to 80 to 85 pounds. And so we're going to introduce him to the treadmill to help burn some extra calories and kind of get rid of some of his excess energy. So there's essentially two ways we can introduce our dogs to a moving treadmill. The first is we can start the treadmill at a very slow rate and then get them on at a slow rate where they kind of know it's moving. The second is we can get them on a stationary treadmill and then start it. So first I opted for the, the moving treadmill option where I get the treadmill moving at a slow rate and I try to lead whiskey on. And as you see, he isn't a big fan of trying to get on the, the moving treadmill. So I went to plan B, which was I turned the treadmill off uh, and then I got him up on the stationary treadmill and I turned it on a slow rate while he was on it. And you can see he's not the most comfortable once it starts moving. They kind of feel that the ground is moving. They try to lock up and get stationary. So you have to be there to help him through it. And since we've already gone through leash pressure, so he understands light pressure with the leash, forward and backwards can help him stabilize and position himself correctly on the treadmill. Once we get him on the treadmill, we want to ramp up the speed a little bit to a more comfortable pace for him. The slowest pace is too slow for him. He's not very comfortable. So I try to get it up to about three miles an hour pretty quickly, because that's gonna be much more natural for him. And for the first session, I, I leave it at this slower rate, but comfortable rate for a few minutes, and then I end my session. We end on a good note. Um, I don't wanna push him too far too fast, and so we keep it short, simple, and we end it. In the next couple sessions, I started to ramp up the speed and ask for a little more time on the treadmill. And one thing I want to note is the pace at which your dog is going on the treadmill. And with each dog, it's going to be different. But one thing you can pay attention to is their gait. So dogs moving slower tend to have what we call a pace. And a pace is when the dog's left legs and their right legs are in sync, meaning their left legs go forward and their right legs go forward. And what we want to do is get them to transition into a trot, meaning their diagonal legs are in sync. So their front left and their rear right are moving together and their front right and their rear left are moving together. This is a much more natural, balanced and efficient run. So to get Whiskey to go from a pace to a trot, I essentially just ramp up the speed until he makes that switch over. Once he makes a switch, I can dial it back down to a more comfortable, um, a little bit slower pace. So for Whiskey, I get it up to maybe six and a half, seven miles per hour and that's when he switches from a pace to a trot. And then I dial it back down to about five, five and a half miles per hour. And that's where I'll keep him on the treadmill for a while. So a couple things to note about whenever you use a treadmill. So every dog is gonna be different as far as how far, how often they're going to run. So you really need to be aware of kind of your dog's condition. For Whiskey right now, we're keeping it from about a mile to a mile and a half a day. And this is on top of his normal day-to-day -day exercise. Just keep in mind that the treadmill should not be the sole source of your dog's exercise. It should be a supplemental exercise. We need to make sure that our dogs are still getting out, um, seeing the world, being exercised, playing tug, um, doing those kinds of things for physical activity and not just sitting on a treadmill. But it is good to help burn some extra calories and some of that excess energy. So far with Whiskey, you've seen that we've covered leash pressure and introducing him to a treadmill. In the coming weeks, stay tuned for us to start covering more on tug play and some foundational reward-based obedience. So things like come, sit, down, and the place bed. And we'll also cover more things going forward. Learberg has produced an online program titled From the Rescue to the Home, which is available as an online course or as a DVD. This program was developed to help educate adopters and potential adopters on how to successfully integrate their newly adopted dog into their lifestyle. As someone involved in rescue and that makes a living training dogs, I feel very passionate about this course. Dogs wind up in shelters for numerous reasons, but are returned back to the, to the shelter after adoption mainly due to training issues. These training issues are typically preventable. The adopter just didn't understand how to introduce their dog into their new life. So this course covers decompression period, introducing your new dog to other pets, 
traveling, grooming, training, behavior problem prevention, and a whole lot more. As a dog trainer, it's basically all the information that I want my clients to know, and as someone who runs a dog rescue, it's all the information that I want my adopters to know. Now besides this course, we wanted to do more to help out, and uh, one of the things that we came up with was rescue organizations can contact Learberg at rescue at Learberg.com, and we'll give them a code. They can promote that code however they want. We put it in our adoption packets, you know, um, website, social media. However, when somebody signs up for the online course or buys a DVD using that code, uh, the adopter or the person signing up will get a 25% discount on the course or the DVD, and the rescue will also get $10 back to them, you know, and, and being involved with rescue myself, I know how we're always hurting for money, spays and neuters cost a lot, uh, dog food, getting a new crate, kennel, whatever, um, can really help us out. So uh, this is kind of our way of trying to, to give back to those um, those rescue organizations um, as well. And I don't expect any of these guys to promote this course without checking it out. So if you are a rescue organization and you do want to check out this course um, before you recommend it, please contact Learberg again at uh, rescue at Learberg.com and uh, we'll we'll put you on it so you can you can check it out and improve it before you promote it. So in closing, one of the things I want to point out to people that are new to Learberg.com is our website is so big that when we put new things into the website, it, it kind of disappears into the abyss. And if you're new to Learberg.com, you may not realize that there's over a thousand videos that we've put together over the last 35 years. The vast majority of them are free. I recommend you go there, use the search function, find the videos that interest you, and see the quality of work that we have to offer for free.